right, welcome back to Jeff Kinenge live at Citizen Television. Here with uh, Ryla Odinga impersonator <laughs> and Machaka's <laughs> governor, Dr. Alfred Mutua. A lot of you <laughs> love that line. You want him to repeat it, we'll try later. But for now, we're talking serious questions. I know many of you are sending in texts, comments, the works. In fact, let's start with some texts or some tweets, if we will, Mercy, yeah? S text first, or SMSs, okay? Uh, and Venya, Kilonzo, you say, JKL, all those beautiful things about farmers, I have not seen. Tractors are there, but not available. The only reason I will vote Mutua is the road from Matu to Machakos. The rest are lies. Well, I think she needs to go to the villages and see them. But at least she acknowledges the road. He acknowledges uh, there's a road. There, but the tractors are there and they're working. Yeah. And they have changed lives. And, uh, you know, agriculture is very important. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, viewer says, Buona Governor is lying. It is easier to see our president than him. I am from Machakos. I don't know what he means that it's easier to see the president than to see me. Are you, are you available? Are you, um, uh, I'm, I'm available. I meet the people. I talk to people. We work with the people. But uh, we have to run the county. We have to talk to our people. We have to manage our programs mm. and I meet a lot of people every day. We do. Yeah, so but why are they hiding their, their name? Yeah, yeah they, they call themselves so viewer. viewer. Yeah, yeah, it's probably somebody sitting here in Nairobi. <laughs> you know, somewhere who is not even from Machakos. <laughs> Kyoko, ask Mutua if the laboratory department is operational. That department is totally dead and in fact patients are praying a l paying a lot of money for investigations in the private clinics. Mm, I have to admit you have a challenge in the laboratory department and I called the head of the hospital in Machakos level 5 to explain and it's a normal government uh, breakage of uh, equipment. I mean this is strange as it comes. You know at times I'm bombarded by things. Eh? I feel like I'm going out of my mind. So I called them and I asked them so I hear the x-ray machine is not functioning so people are going to a private clinic because somebody told me that. Many of the people come to see me. So this viewer is from somewhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, I was told that by somebody. And then I was told the lab is not... A so they explained to me that uh, they need money to... They need to, to buy the new x-ray part that is broken. They need so I asked them, how much do you need? They need about 2.5 million shillings. I asked them, so why aren't you using it? They say, well, we are waiting for approval, blah, 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 fish kick. I asked them, how much money does the hospital have in the bank? They are not very sure. So I called the bank manager at, uh, you know, in Machako. Mm -hmm. They said, the level five, how much money do they have? 17.8 million shillings sitting there. And they're just doing paperwork. And they can't spend the 2.5. Paperwork, paperwork, as our people are suffering. So I mean, at times, you know, <laughs> you, you, you're a governor, but you're in a system with so many people that fail you mm. all the time. You know, I, I think I'm, I'm one of the happiest people, uh, mostly, especially when I get home and I see a beautiful woman but out there you get frustrated <laughs> because things are not yeah. happening yeah. as they should and they're always abusing you and they always and there's always somebody yeah. who is not yeah. in a hurry yeah mm. Muya, you say mutua promised two million to the needy students from the county studying at daystar university to date that money has never been received ask him what happened since these students could not do their exams that money was released to some students and it was a matter of the needy students. So if you are not needy, then you didn't get the money. Mm -hmm. I mean, it comes down to that, you know. Scholarships are given to the destitute, to the ones who cannot afford. So people thought that it is for everyone. So if you didn't get it, then I'm sorry, you can try again. But two million on a need of 30 million, you're only going to get just a small amount of people. Mm -hmm. And that's as simple as it is. All right, tweets coming in very thick and very fast. Anthony Nzuki say, Dr. Mutua talks of many vehicles in his county, yet most of the vehicles bears private registration numbers. Could you explain about it? Yeah, it is simple that the county governments do not bear GK numbers. So when people see green plates, but it is K something, they think that's a private vehicle. It is not. It is actually a county vehicle. The county vehicles don't bear, you, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And now we are in a process of changing vehicle by vehicle to the you know go, uh, government of Machakos number which is given. number what? What, what 16 so it's 016 or whatever it or is something like that uh -huh. yeah. yeah so it's a process you know you have to go to KRA you have to do it one by one one by one by one by one it is a process going you know 
you have answers for everything you know that because i'm on the ground i'm not sitting at uh, you know at, at at a desk in nairobi trying to cook things up i'm talking and because i'm a hands-on person that's when the person says it's easy to see the president not me mm. i mean they must be joking i'm a very hands-on people person i get out to the villages i get out and i listen to mothers i get out and i talk to people about their needs and i tell them i can do this i cannot do this you know even god created the world with all his powers in six days he didn't create it in one day there's so much i would like to do mm. but you can't do it in one day Absolutely. that is why i need another five years so I can complete the work that I've started. Oh, good campaign plug there. Well done, Governor. Well done. Pius Kilu, or Pius, whatever. Ask him about the promises he made to Ndivini Ward about water in Tarmac Road. Ndivini looks like a marginalized area. Ndivini is a very marginalized area for many years. Ndivini is on the other part of Machakos towards Moranga area. Mm -hmm. uh, the roads have been very bad. For the first time since independence, we have graded the road with we've marammed a third of the road towards Ndidini. They have a health center that is, wow, wonderful, uh, that has been done very, very well. And uh, we have about, I think, 10 boreholes we've dug in Ndidini ward uh, themselves. We have 10 dams in Ndidini. We have 15 mulikamwizis in Ndidini. So there are projects. They are not enough. They are not enough. You know, we have to spread this cake out. You know what I mean? Mm. It's a big county with uh, close to 1.3 million people. It's a large mass running from Masinga all the way to the Mboni Hills. It's large. The county is quite big. And you have to spread the little you have across. I wish I had more money. I would provide more. But it's not... Divini has been in problems for many years, but we are catching up. And the road from Divini is in my, is my program for Tamakin. It is. I'm the only governor who has made highways in the whole country. You're going to tarmac that road? I'm going to tarmac that road. And for me in Masinga, I'm tarmacking. In the next five years, God willing, I plan to have all the major roads in Machakos tarmacked. It is not magic. They have done it in France. They have done it in Brazil. They have done it in South Africa. We can do it in Machakos. <laughs> Listen to the man speak. Eric, please ask Gov Mr. Governor what he is doing about the poor state of roads in Siokimau. Yes, in Siokimau, yes. We've had uh, many major problems in Siokimau that actually started before I was there. The, the county council, the municipal council of Mavoko, which was led by now the, the MP from Avoko. Never did anything for those roads. It's black cotton soil, and it's been very... There's Kiungani Road, which we've started grading. Mm. There's Katani Road, which is being tarmacked as we speak. It's continuing. The works are continuing. There is... Uh, I can't remember the, the community road, uh, which has been graded. Oh, we're very grateful that some quarries have actually given us free maram and free rocks, and we're providing equipment to continue the works. We've put culverts across those roads, and we are continuing with the program so that as we get more money, we can actually tarmac those roads. Okay. The traffic, by the way, on Mombasa Road, off Machakos onto the highway, terrible. It's very bad. Terrible. That's, that's why we need a train system that flows to Machakos because the vehicles have grown. The problem with Machakos is that since I became governor, the economy has just grown. So we've got more people coming to Machakos, we've got more Machakos people owning cars, we've got more people living in Machakos. So the traffic has just uh, quadrupled because of the economy. Before I became governor, a piece of land on the highway to Machakos mm. was 200,000 shillings per acre. Within a few months, when we started our investment program, it went to about 1.2, 1.5 million an acre. A few years ago, it was 7 million an acre. Now, the same piece is 30 million shillings an acre. Come on. Since I became governor of Machakos, the economy has grown. Population has grown. That's how you grow a place. 30 so million growing, an acre? 30 million an what acre. What is this, Runda? That's how it is. It's the Machakos. Oof. Thomas Mwiri. Ask Mutua why he has consistently ignored Mudwani Ward. Roads are pathetic at Zebra, Kinka, Gidunguri. And I totally agree. The problem with Mutwani Ward is that we've got MCAs, m members of county assembly. I have bought about 25 graders, which you give to members of county assembly. You tell them, please go and grade those roads. The MCA that they have had in Mudwani has really not done the work. He would not come for the graders because his concept was, the wiper concept was, mm. if you work, if Mutua gives you scholarships and you go and give bursaries, then it will be seen that Mutua's government is working. If you get graders and you go and grade the roads, 
you get tippers and you tippers and you ensure that work is done then mutua has worked but their job for the last four years has been tried to show that mutua has done nothing that's what they've been trying mm -hmm. to do but who suffers the people it's the people who the suffer people. yeah I'll bet oh, over the, the poll. We have new results in our poll. We've been asking you the question Would you vote for Alfred Butu as governor of Machakos? It is dead even. 50% yes, 50% no. Okay, keep voting. You have uh, 30 minutes before polls close. By the way, these polls are completely unscientific, okay? It's just our viewers, mm. uh, not verified, so, you know, just, yeah, bear that in mind. Albert Kigada. He says, a good friend of yours, he says, ask the governor why there's no consistent fresh water supply in Mololongo. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mololongo. Mm. The problem with Mololongo is that the water that uh, comes to Mololongo is by the EPZ. We have the EPZ. And the EPZ gets the water, buys the water from Nairobi to come towards Mololongo, and then is able to distribute it to the river and Mololongo. There's been a running battle between the, Ma it's called Mavasco, which is the water company in Mololongo, in in uh, in that area mm. with the EPZ, but I intervened. I went and saw the MD for EPZ, and we said we need to take care of this. But in Lolongo, we have dug about three boreholes, which now we want to start, uh, you know, refining the water, cleaning the water up, and putting into the existing pipeline mm. so that people can get water. Urban areas have a big problem, but also we have desilted the dam. Uh, it's called the KMC dam. Right. We've desilted that dam uh, in the river so as to provide more water to the people over the river. There's a story that came, um, um, uh, well, let's go on to your main opponent, yes. Ovinyandeti. Mm. There's a story coming out late today that she may be barred from contesting. The reason is she still apparently, allegedly, belongs to CCU mm -hmm. and WIPA, and you can belong to two parties at the same time. In fact, I've got a message here from the Secretary General of Chamba Chauzalendo, Tony Moravi. He says, well, Vinya Deti will not be on the ballot. We have sued her for belonging to two parties. Are you aware of that? No, I heard about it. I saw it, uh, by, I think, on Citizen News uh, earlier on today. And I saw it on online. But I'm not, I, don't, I don't know the details about it. Mm. I think it is something that came up today in the tribunal. That's what they said. Yeah. But I'll find out more, more uh, tomorrow. She was your main opponent in the last election. Yes. You beat her resoundly. Yes. But she won the wiper nomination twice because they had to go back. And they were nullified twice. But in the end, she was declared the winner. They were nullified twice. She was not declared the winner. The Independent Party's Tribunal said that both of them were a sham. And then said because the time had run out, they gave the permission to wiper to choose whoever they wanted and do a direct nomination. Because their nominations did not work. I mean, look at it. Let's be serious. I mean, I don't care about her figures, but let's be serious. In 2013, IBC conducted elections in Machakos with 1,200 polling stations and streams from 6 a.m. in the morning until 6 p.m. in the evening. Mm -hmm. During that time, 350,000 votes were cast, where I got over 260, 270, she got over 70, 80,000. I defeated her. But 350,000 votes were cast in 1,200 polling stations running from morning to evening on a day when everybody took a break. Then they say that Wavina Deti on a day in 80 polling stations on a nomination running from 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock got 300,000 votes. She better teach IBC how to do elections. How possible is that? In any way in the world. You that would shock uh, everybody. I mean, that is ridiculous. I mean, even it bears common sense. And you saw the video going around. Mm. People seated, you know, marking ballots. You, you saw it mm -hmm. yourself. People seated marking ballots. The, the WIPA registered members in Machakos, and Mudama said it. I'm not a member of WIPA, but quoting Senator Mudama, uh, it's about 80,000 people. That was also what uh, was found out by the tribunal. Mm. So if 80,000 are members of WIPA, then where did the rest come from? What is your beef with her? I don't have any beef with her. She's just a competitor that we're going to beat, God willing. I don't have any beef with her at all. All I know is that uh, she has said that she's going to roll back everything that Mutua has done. Mm. 
that is going to remove the ambulances mm. that our women are getting so that now our women can start dying by the roadside again. She had said she's going to destroy all the projects I've done. So I expect her to take a tractor and start destroying the Mokton Mamwala Kidimani Road so that she can build her own road. She has said she's going to pass all the people's park and sell it to people because she's very good at selling land and that has been doing land deals for a long time mm. and I don't do the land deals. She has said herself that she's going to stop the projects that I'm doing. That means mothers who are getting water now will stop getting water in their villages. That will be my only beef to her that you don't try to campaign by rolling back what has been done. Mm. You, you build on what is there. You build, you improve what you find. You do not destroy what you find. Yeah. I mean, it's just as simple as that. I got a text just in from Mavinia mm -hmm. She says, Jeff, tell him he will be shocked on August the 8th. Mm. I think I'll be shocked. I, I'm, I'm, I, I'm sh I'll be shocked. I think I'll be so shocked by how big the margin is that I've beaten her. <laughs> Ouch. I mean, Ouch. <laughs> uh, let me take you back 11 years. Yes. 11 years. Government spokesman Alfred Mutua. And you've heard this story many times mm. before, so it's nothing new. Uh, a young senator from the state of Illinois comes to town yes, yes, seeking yes. his Kenyan roots. Comes and talks, gives a great lecture on corruption, fighting corruption. He was really against corruption. And they asked the government spokesman, Alfred Mutua, for your comment after that. And you dismissed him. He said, the junior senator from Illinois, blah, blah, blah. Did you regret that? No, I did not dismiss him, and I did not, I was not asked for a comment. I gave a government statement. A government is not made up of an individual. A government is made up, it's a mirror. So as a government spokesman, you give a government statement. It's not a personal statement. That was the view of the government of Kenya. He was a junior senator because on your first year in the Senate, you were in the U.S., mm. you are referred to as a junior senator. Yeah, but in, the second, in, mm. the, no, in the first year, you are referred to as a freshman. In the second year, you are referred to as a sophomore. In the third year, you are referred to as a junior. And then now you are a full senior senator. That was the title. When we got uh, the notification from, I think, the American uh, government, mm -hmm. they said the junior senator from Illinois will be visiting Kenya. That is how they refer to them. That's how the Americans refer to them. Mm. So we, re we use their own language to refer to him about those things. And the content of the statement was, yes, we like the things you've said. Yes, we like the things that you've told us, but we do not like the tone of the way or the voice of the way you told us mm. because you've relied on what the opposition have told you. Yeah. And, and, and I think that that was, that was the main and thing. And when yes. the junior senator from Illinois went on to become Barack Obama. And I was very happy. <laughs> Having lived in America, I was very happy. <laughs> and I met him when he came to Did Kenya. You? And we shook hands and yeah. we laughed about it. And he told me, good job, what you're doing in Machakos. I was surprised that he knew. He told you that? He told me that. Very proud about it. He said, good job, doing a good job. Yeah. Government. He didn't say, thanks for calling me junior, Alfie. No, but he was a junior senator then. Okay. And he understands. He can see the bigger picture. You know, Barack Obama is bigger yeah. than uh, you know uh, semantics. Right. He understood the context. There's a guy called Jaro Soja. I don't know if you know him. He's Gol Mahia's number one fan. Mm. He's watching you from Dar es Salaam actually nice. right now, and he says, um, "Ask Dr. Mutua if he will concede defeat if you're defeated on August 8th. Will you concede? I mean, uh, what choice do you have?" But uh, why would they concede defeat? Because it will not get to that. You are really confident, you know that? No, be because I have worked for my people. Mm. And I've served my people. And my people are not evil. My people are smart. My people are bright. My people are looking at the future of Ukambani. And they are seeing that we can change our lives. That's where my confidence comes from. And it comes from the fact that God has brought me this far. He does not raise you and then drop you. That is the work of the devil. I don't serve the devil. I serve a true and just God. Mm. It's as simple as that. Any regrets about leaving Wiper and aligning with Jubilee? I've never... I've, I, I mean, Wiper kicked me out. And uh, I have my Mandela chapter party, which is not in Jubilee and which is not in, uh, in Nasa. Yeah, but you threw your support it, behind it, Jubilee. It is in Pen I threw my support behind Uhuru Kenyatta. There's a difference. For me, I said, Uru Kenyatta needs to be given time to finish his work. You look at the things he's done, you look at the way he's done things, because 
for me, I sit down and look at the benefit for my people. It's not about me. I'm not looking for a job. It's about the be benefit for my people. Who will provide more to our people? That's, that's all I care about. Is it going to be a tough presidential election? I'm worried about these elections. I was there in 2007 and I saw the kind of language that had been spoken. Like the young man was saying, you're employing more people from outside the county. I saw uh, the kind of utterances uh, when people come and say this is a jubilee zone or this is a NASA zone. The rest get out. Mm. I have seen people being given threats, being told if you are this tribe, get out of this region. I am seeing a replica of 2007 and Kenyans we need to be very careful. We should not ban this country because one or two people want to get power. It's not about the presidency. And I tell people, these elections are not just about who will be president. They are about the 47 governors, 47 senators, the 290 members of uh, National Assembly, the 47, you know, the 1850, you know, uh, is it 18 something members of county assembly. There's more at stake here. It's not just Uhuru and Raila, Uhuru and Raila. So there's a lot of choices that we can make. Mm. We don't need to burn our country because of trying to sustain who you wait, no you wait, yeah. and then we have no country to live in. African countries are laughed at in the West. We lived in the West. They think we are stupid. Yeah. They think that we are idiots yeah. of the highest order. You know that. Absolutely. Because we resort to violence, we resort to tribalism, we resort to stealing from our own mothers, we resort to this kind of uh, talk, you know, when, when we hear people giving threats that we are going to send this one home, we are going to do this one, this one will teach you a lesson. I mean, it's, it's the kind of language you find in third world mentality. And we need, to, uh, we need to move to higher way of looking at things. But we can only move to that higher level of looking at things if we focus not on ourselves as leaders, but we focus on our people, what our people need. Mm -hmm. Once we focus on our people, we'll see the light and then we'll stop speaking in a language that can tear our country apart. Is that going to happen in our lifetime, yours and mine? Well, if some of us get our way, yes it will. It will. I'm very confident. Kenyans, young people in Kenya are smart. They are energetic. They just want to be given an opportunity. They want to be given a chance. People are ready to work hard, but they don't have the opportunity. When we have leaders in WIPA, blocking the building of a new city so that now jobs over 50,000 jobs go to Uganda, go to Angola, go to South Africa instead of being in Machakos being in our country. Well, you know we, we can't go anywhere. So we need to reverse that kind of thinking. We need basically a new order in this country. We need a new way of doing things. We need a way that says it is possible to get your development and still alive. That is why we're saying that we're on a journey. A journey. A proper journey. If you look at the symbol of Mandilo Chap Chap, it's a tarmac road to show that it is possible to move from here to where you want to be while you're still alive. Yeah. And what do you tell critics of yours who say, you know what, Dr. Mutua is just all talk. He's just PR. All talk, no yeah. action. But they say the same thing about people who work. I mean, it has been going on for a long time. From the days of Leonardo da Vinci, anybody who's tried to do anything has been criticized as doing nothing. And people who are not able to keep up, they always say, ah, you know, you know how it is. Yeah. But you judge somebody by the fruits of their labor. You judge somebody by what they have done, not what they say they have done. We have a lot of empty promises being given to people in this country. People promise the heavens. Yeah. People say, I will do, I will do, I will do. Once elected, they forget. They sit down, get allowances, do their thing, run political wars. When they are told to account for anything, they say our tribe is being finished. And people just wallow in poverty. But we need now to change that so that you can give promises and do. And today I, I was on a campaign trip and one mother told me, when you said you'd provide ambulances, I thought it was the same talk. But now that ambulance has carried my daughter to give birth. That ambulance saved my son. You know, these are people giving you testimonials mm. that they thought we were just talking. These are women who has water nearby. She used to go five kilometers to the river. Now she walks 300 meters to the nearest tap. So people's lives can be changed. Mm. But we need to galvanize our energies from negativity. You know, Kenyans are very negative. Yeah, extremely. Very, very negative. Extremely. You, you 
somebody does something, yeah. we we spin it yeah. to negativity. Yeah, it's like you know, you, you have a PhD, right? Yes, I do. Okay, so the definition of PhD to Kenyans? It's pull him down, pull her down. There you go. Let me give you a good example. There's a story told of uh, crabs, you know crabs, eh? mm -hmm. crabs mm -hmm. uh, that were being transported uh, in an aircraft. Uh, there's a basket of crabs from Tanzania, a basket of crabs from Mozambique, and a basket of crabs from Kenya. And the ones from Tanzania were covered. The ones from uh, Mozambique were covered. But the basket with Kenyan crabs were, were not covered. And so after they were loaded, uh, the pilot said, wait a minute, I mean, these crabs that are not covered will will walk all over, will we'll get out. And sting us. Yeah, and the, 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 the guy loading said, no, 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 these are Kenyan crabs. When one tries to get up, the rest pull them down. Oh. Yes, never get up. Oh. I mean, that's an example that is given about how our society thinks. Yeah. We don't let anybody go up. We yeah. try to pull them down. Jeff Mubeir is asking, Governor Mutua, you promised m people of Machakos and Kenyans in general a Hollywood, a Masha yes. Wood. Yes. You yes, promised. Yes. yes, and we've done, we've actually finished a movie. My childhood now has studios, we've got young people training, and we've got young people recording, and we record for free. If you're a musician, you're from Machakos, or even from surrounding areas, you actually record for free. You know, Hollywood was not made in one day. Hollywood was not made in one day. So we've started somewhere, and we are continuing. And my expectation is that we're going to get uh, a Hollywood film made in Machakos very soon. We have waived uh, fees. If you want to film, in Machakos, you don't pay any rates. It's free of charge. At all? At all. Free of charge. Take your camera, as long as you're filming in Machakos, it's free of charge. And they won't be hassled or stopped? You're or not hassled or stopped. It's, it's, it's there, it's the law. We made it so, so that you can promote the industry. We are promoting our musicians. We are supporting them. We've got our youth centers, so that uh, our young people can go there, log in, use the youth centers, and continue. And now I'm, I'm moving to even a better initiative, if you allow me, I'll talk about mm -hmm. it. You, you see, when I was in Form 2, my parents are the best parents in the world. They brought me up, but we were poor. Mm. I mean, we, we used to live, born in Machakos, I used to live in Kibira, you know, in a mud house, uh, using a pit latrine, and then my parents got a 200 shilling raise, so we moved to Kawangware, with a satellite. I lived in a wooden shack with, with, uh, with no floor, with no cement floor, with just sand, up to the age of 21, with a pit latrine. That's, that's where we lived. And when I was in Form 2, I could not continue with my education. My parents could just not afford to pay school fees. But I'm there from my church called Hezron. Actually paid my school fees from Form 2 up to Form 6. I would not be sitting here today if it was not for that education that person paid for me. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that both NASA and Jubilee are saying they're going to pay, a, they're going to provide, you know, free, uh, free, free school education yes. up to, you know, Form 4. Yeah. And in Machakos, I've put together a program that if you are from Machakos County, you are a resident, you are a child of Machakos County, we've set up a program that if you finished from four and you want to continue studying, you want to do a certificate, a diploma, a higher diploma, and even a degree, my government will pay for you 100%, mm. like what they did in Singapore, yeah. so that we can have educated people, so we can create a skill base for people to be able to go forward. That is what we call my little chap chap, where you think about your people first, not just about acquisition of power. Wow. It took 40 years for Lee Kuan Yew to turn Singapore around, you know that? Yes, I You do. don't have 40 years. No, but you start. Once you start, others, you pass the baton and they continue. But somebody has to start. And we have started that journey in Machakos. And we are not going to roll back. That's why I'm confident that I'll continue serving my people as the governor of Machakos. Governor. It's got 30 seconds, maybe even a minute. That's your camera over there. Yes. Some final thoughts, closing thoughts. I want to ask my people of Machakos to let me finish what I started doing. And I want to tell people of Kenya that we should not give up. We have a great country. That is why we have a party called Mindeleo Chap Chap. This is a party that says you deserve to get the development that you should get while you are alive. You are important. And I am asking you to vote for Mindeleo Chap Chap. Our candidates are all over the country. We are the third largest party now with over 911 candidates. And I'm asking you to support us in this initiative. Namusha Kabisa, Nakuliza Munyombe. Please pray for me. Pray for my people of Machakos. Pray for all of us as we do God's work. Because what we are doing here as leaders, what I am doing is simply God's work.
Thank you, Governor. And Stephen Kegwa, I don't know if he's a resident of Mashakas or not. He says, Good evening, Jeff. Please tell Dr. Tari that he is a painting of the progressive leadership that this country needs so badly. I am proud of what he has done in Machakos. Thank you very much. Well done, Governor. Keep up the work. At the end of the day, it's up to you, people mm -hmm. of Machakos. Thank that's, you. That's what uh, it is. Uh, do you follow me? Uh, on Twitter? Yes. On everything. I do follow you. you tell your viewers I'm at, uh, at Dr. Alfred Mutua. You know, if they punch in Alfred Mutua, yes. it comes up as doctor. Uh, don't worry. Yeah. Dr. Alfred yeah, Mutua. Yeah, yeah, it's because there are a lot of fake, fake accounts. That's what I'm saying. Like. Uh -huh. And then there's uh, Facebook, Dr. Alfred Mutua, the one with uh, many likes. Please like the page so that you can keep progress, you know. And I'm providing GPS coordinates of uh, our projects so that you can drive with the GPS coordinates and go and actually see the borehole in existence. Go and see that hospital. Go and see that uh, ECD. Yeah. And uh, from this month, we're employing all the interviewed ECD teachers. Close to over 800 uh, teachers are being employed. They are all getting their letters. So they can continue educating our young people from uh, the lower... So you're putting place. your money where your mouth is? Yes, I am. Someone was asking real quick, Cobra Squad, when is it coming back? <laughs> I think after my re-election, I'll take maybe three or four months off and actually film. I'll start the script Pole Pole, yeah. Killer Gioni, Nandika Kitu. But now we want to do Cobra Squad, the movie, with Jeff Koenangi in a cameo appearance. Being kidnapped somewhere in there. Yeah, or kidnapping somebody. <laughs> <laughs> it can go either way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Governor. Asan -san. Appreciate your time. Shukran. Well Asan -san. done. Asan -san. Well done. Na karibu machakos, Jeff. Oh, absolutely. Come, come, come. And yeah. let's, let's walk around. Yeah. Let's see what you can actually... It is, I'm telling you, Jeff, Man, it is possible. We can turn around this country. No doubt. We don't have to have sewers. We don't have to have slums. We don't have to have people suffering for lack of food. We have, this is a rich country. We have so much potential. I'm very confident. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching. You know if it's Wednesday, it's all about JKL interviews. You will not find anywhere else. Remember, it's the only letters on the keyboard that follow each other. JKL. Every Wednesday, right here on Citizen Television. JKL is sponsored by Telcom. Telcom moving with you. Thanks so much for joining. Keep tweeting at Dr. Alfred Mutua. You'll see it at Alfred Mutua. At Quinanga Jeff, of course, at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag JK Live. Thanks so much for watching. Good night. Good luck. God bless. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you.